Hello and welcome back to a Squirrel Plays. Today we're going to be talking about TTRPGs. Who would have thought? But more specifically, we're going to be talking about TTRPGs that I have already talked about before, which sounds like an absolute waste of time, but hear me out. Some of these that I shared with you all were already tried and true systems like EZD6 and Mouse Ritter, but some were the new kids on the block like Adventurous and others were still in development. So, I thought it'd be neat to look back and see what the older ones have been up to and what all they've added, as well as how the new kids were faring. But more importantly, I wanted to follow up on some that I had promoted to make sure they're actually keeping their end of the bargain and fulfilling their promises. Because we all know how some Kickstarters can go. So, with that said, we'll start with the easy ones that have already been around a bit, and that would be EZD6, Mouse Ritter, and Tricube Tales. Then we'll move on to the new kids on the block, which is, well, honestly just the one, and that would be Adventurous. Then there will be RPG Stories, which was actually software for TTRPGs, but it's still worth following up on. And then I saved probably the biggest news for last, which is Dim Day Red, because there is a lot of cool things going on over there that go beyond just that game. So make sure you stick around for that. Or skip straight to it. I'm not your dad. Do what you want. All right. So funnily enough, Easy D6 is going to be the easiest one to cover because I've already done a few videos following up on it. DM Scotty is always hard at work with his system over there, and his genius continues to impress me every time he comes up with something. I've already covered his level up deck, the book of quests, and the newest Wasted World playset, so you already know how all that is going. But I will add that his Discord server is alive and well, and they had a community project for Wasted World. It was a contest where everyone submitted a location to visit in the game, along with some monsters and things to do. Nothing huge, just a collection of small to medium things that they could share with the community as a bundle. So I thought that was really, really cool, and I really wanted to submit something, but I just wasn't in a position to donate the proper amount of time and care for it. I'm actually a bit bummed out about the whole thing, but hey, maybe there'll be another one down the road? What do you think, Scotty? Huh? Huh? Anyway, the Discord is a pretty cool place. Some of the physical stuff people are making and sharing is really awesome, so if that's your jam, you can cruise right on over there to hang out. All right, so the main reason I want to talk about this one is just to share something incredibly stupid I did when making the original video for it. And I thank the good lord every time I see this game that I didn't actually say anything about it in that video. For whatever reason, the entire time I was working on that video, I had it in the back of my squirrely little skull that this game was super old and that the author was long since dead from old age. I have no idea where that logic came from, but for some reason, I had it. And that's why I never reached out to him when I originally made the video, which is what I like to do when reviewing something that wasn't sent to me directly. Never mind that it says right there in the book, copyright 2020. While incredibly embarrassing, I am happy to announce that Isaac Williams is indeed not dead. So with that confession out of the way, that would bring me to something that my original video did not mention, and that would be a couple other official Mouse Ritter pieces, such as Honey and the Rafters and the Estate. Also, there are third-party goodies as well, none of which I've tried, but hey, they are there. And there's a lot with a significant chunk from this 10 Acre Games. But that's not all, as they say. The Discord is alive and well with their mouse creations, like what you see here. But other than that, nothing new or big over there that I'm aware of doesn't mean Isaac isn't cooking up something behind the scenes, but that's all I know, and at this point I am too embarrassed to reach out and ask. So if Mouse Ritter was your jam, there's a few extra goodies to get into there, and while I haven't personally spent any time with the community myself, my buddy Krig has, and he's always had good things to say about them. It seems like Isaac runs a good ship over there, which is probably easier to do when you're not dead. Tri-Cube Tales. I would say this is a favorite of mine, but, you know, so is EZD6 and Mouse Ritter, so me saying that really doesn't mean much. Anyway, I actually got some news here. First off, Zadmar is... 
still pushing out his one page settings. Just a few that he's dropped since I did my original TriQ videos are Champions of Osiris, Conniving Cat Burglars, Champions of Fen or however you say that, and Ghost Banishers. <laughs> And if you're unfamiliar with these, they're just a one-page thing, though really, if you have to print it on both sides, is it really one page? Regardless, small they may be, I find these little dudes to be fantastic sources of inspiration. He's got a bunch of different settings to choose from, and while the roll tables initially seem a little small, they have worked so well for me when it comes time to generate some ideas for an adventure. 10 out of 10 stuff, and the conniving cat burglars may or may not include yours truly. See, look, I'm a complication. Just like my mom always said. <laughs> like and subscribe. Now here's the really cool news. Zadmar has been cooking up a little something something called Tri-Cube Tactics, which supposedly adds an optional layer of complexity for combat and character advancement, or at least that's how it was explained to me a while back. But... That's supposed to come out next month, so definitely be on the lookout for that, and I will 100% be doing a video on that when the time comes. Woo! All right, yeah, come on, sing this. Clap, clap, baby, clap. Gonna be honest, ladies and gents, I didn't think I'd have beans to say for this one. I had good things to say about it when I made the original video, and I still do. Just like I said then, I think this game sets out with a goal in mind, or a design intent, if you will, and nails it. It's currently got the silver medal on drive through which, if I'm not mistaken, means he's sold over 100 copies, and he's sitting at a nice 5 out of 5 stars with a handful of ratings, so, you know, not too shabby. And I thought that was going to be it, but I reached out to the man himself to see what else he had cooking, if anything, and lord have mercy, that boy been cooking. First off, he's been working on Adventurous 2.0. In his words, it is mostly minor tweaks and refinements with the biggest changes being done to alchemy and the wilderness travel system. He has also made three adventure modules at this point, and not just for his own system. He describes them as system neutral, but optimal with Adventurous, which I think is pretty cool. And then after that comes the first, and only so far, Adventurous Expansion, which is the Talent Expansion. Now, I'm sure you can figure out on your own what that does. It gives you more talents for all the classes. And while that might be what he's done for his own system, that is surprisingly not all he's been up to. He also made the Metery Mishap, which is an adventure module for Shadow Dark, and he even managed to snag one of the original Shadow Dark artists for it. And, yeah, I know, this list just keeps on going. And he's currently working on the follow-up adventure to that one. In his words, they are loosely tied together setting-wise, and he hopes it will be released this year. Now, considering it's late October, I'd say that should be coming our way pretty soon. That's a lot, man, and I can't even get my own one simple little game finished. Okay, now this is the main reason I originally wanted to make this video. This software was a very ambitious project, and my cynical self had a lot of doubts about it when I first saw it, and I believe I even expressed that in my video about it. In short, I was more than a bit cautious about promoting the Kickstarter for it, and that's why I thought some follow-up would be good for everyone. So, how have they been doing? Are they running off with everyone's money and getting sued? Well, not as of making this. While the Kickstarter for the Wrath of Devs update did meet its goal, they were really banking on it making some of the stretch goals, which unfortunately did not happen. So they're doing what they can to make ends meet over there. And this is where it gets a little confusing. See, if you back the Kickstarter, you got a separate key for the Wrath of Devs update. Essentially, it was its own DLC. And remember, that was on top of purchasing the software to begin with, or getting a bundled backer package. If you just bought the software originally from their Kickstarter or from the Steam store page, then you're going to be missing out on some of these updates, as explained in the end of my video, and clarified by Brave Alice Games themselves in the pinned comment. So, have they been delivering? I've seen some updates roll out, including the multi-level building, which was huge, and rescaling of everything, which was also pretty significant, and those were updates available to everyone. You also have the Wrath of Dev updates rolling out for those that supported it, and as you can see here, you'll get to see all of the Wrath of Dev stuff you don't have access to. 
which is, eh, it's not great if I'm being honest. Personally, I never was a fan of games showing me what I could be paying more money for. But the main software is still in early access on Steam, so who knows what will happen when it hits 1.0. It could bring you all kinds of stuff and new features that they feel might should be available for everyone and not just the Wrath of Dells DLC, or it could bring you nothing more than what you already have. Such is the nature of the beast. My main point here is they have been rolling out their updates as promised, despite not quite reaching their desired goals. And on top of that, while working on this script, they did drop yet another Kickstarter, but this time it was for a custom class for Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition and 5th Edition. There were some backer bundles you could get that had some tie-ins with RPG stories, but it was also a standalone thing. The crazy thing is they hit almost $20,000 in the first 24 hours of the Kickstarter. And while I'm happy for them for finding success, Words cannot express my disappointment in the TTRPG community throwing that much money towards something 5e related. You could have given it to me. But hey, maybe some of that extra will get funneled into RPG stories. And now for the big stuff. If you remember, or were around at the time, I did a video on a game called Dim Day Red. It had one Kickstarter under its belt already that found a lot of success, and then the second Kickstarter also found a lot of success. I had a lot of good things to say about the game, particularly the level of immersion and world building it brought, along with a lot of cool artwork. Now, this game was put together by a Mr. Spiros Dracatos, and yes, it's a cool name because he's over in Greece. And since he's found success with his project, he has gone and moved up in the world, starting his own little business, focusing on TTRPGs. Mr. Jakados sits on his golden throne overlooking all of Greece, and he's coming for you. But in a good way. You see, this new endeavor of his, which he calls One Sick Puppy, is, in his words, to empower lesser-known creators to bring their stories to the attention of the world. In other words, all of you with your little projects that you've been working on, myself included, if you get serious about them, you might want to reach out because they offer services like branding, crowdfunding, consulting, small-scale publishing, and the like. I was talking to Krisa the other day, who now works for Spiros, and we were having a chat about my nuts. The game, that is. And she made mention that they're really trying to become a one-stop shop for people like you and I who are trying to design their own thing and be able to cater to whatever package deal you need. So if you actually had some art skills, unlike me, and needed a little mechanical design help instead, they could give you just that part. Or if you have no art skills like me and also don't know what you're doing like me, you could get the whole package deal. Now, that part of the whole operation here is still under development. Krisa says they are preparing a number of workshops on game design and storytelling, so that will be really cool to see. And I actually got to play Dim Day Red not long ago with some of their team, one of which was the developer for their Foundry module, and man oh man, that thing was cool. I know not everyone likes VTTs, but for those of you who do, and those of you who also happen to use Foundry, this thing is pretty slick. And I believe if you grab the Dim Day Red module in Foundry, it comes with a free starter adventure, or it will when it's all finished. And if that wasn't enough, they still have other projects they're working on because Spiros is just as bad as I am and can't hold still. The only difference is he actually finishes his projects, whereas I just go and start a new one. Like this little app here, which is for brainstorming and idea giving when you're putting some adventures together or world building or writing or whatever the case may be. But it wasn't just a brainstorming tool. For those that were willing to contribute, they will show off the work of other indie TTRPGs within the prompts with information on where to find said game. Dim Day Red itself will continue to expand with zines, not zines like it's actually spelled. We had that conversation in the original video. And then yet another project here with these Egyptian themed tarot card thingies, which got more of this cool artwork. As of writing this, that Kickstarter hasn't even started yet, so I guess it's just a kick at this point. And just a quick promotion because I like the guys over there, you can get Dim Dairy Red or Dim Dairy Red, that's a new one. 
You can get Dim Day Red for free on drive through but if you sign up for their newsletter, you can get the Butcher of Holloway Adventure for free, which is the one that I played with the group, and it was a lot of fun. I think it's been exciting to see them grow the way they have, instead of just riding the success of Dim Day Red and calling it a day, Mr. Spiros is going on to try and help others find a similar success. And you know what? That's pretty nice. Squirrel approved. Chris has been trying to get her hands on my nuts for a hot minute now, but I keep telling her it was just a goofy little thing I made in PowerPoint with stick figures to play with my friends, but maybe, maybe I'll try to at least get some artwork for it or something. And you know, maybe put it in something other than PowerPoint. Anyway, how about a shout out? I think since we ended on talking about helping indie TTRPG devs, it would be more than appropriate to give a shout out to Dave over at Grimwood Games. And I'm super sad I wasn't able to do this sooner. See, Mr. Dave here has been working on a game called Iron Bound, and I didn't really get exposed to it until the last couple days of the backer kit. I did, however, get to play a session with him in the fantasy offshoot of it called Plague Bound. Functions the same way, just a different setting. It's a D12 dice pool system, which might sound a little familiar, so naturally we had some common ground to bond over, and it has a bit of easy D6 inspiration, which was also cool to see. But I enjoyed it. It was a really fun game, and after trying it out, I rushed over to the backer kit to throw my support in, and I am happy to tell you that he has raised $2,100 for it when he only had a goal of $500. Needless to say, he's pretty excited about it. And there you have it, folks. A little lengthy this time around, I know, but I appreciate you hanging around and watching, and I hope you found these updates and follow-ups helpful. If so, I'll most definitely continue to do them once a year, probably around this time or maybe a little closer to the end of the year. Let me know your thoughts down below. Did things develop the way you assumed? Disappointed or surprised with anything? Happy to hear it, or did you hate the whole thing? 